Mars is calling us, and for decades, humanity has been preparing our response. But have you ever stopped to wonder, how the hell are we going to get there? Because look, it's not just about hopping on a rocket and taking off. We're talking about a journey that could last months through the deadly void of space to a planet that wants to kill us in every possible way. And here's what's going to surprise you. There are at least three completely different plans to make this happen, each with their deadly advantages and disadvantages. From the genius Buzz Aldrin, yes, the guy who walked on the moon, to revolutionary ideas that could make Elon Musk obsolete, and of course, the starship itself that everyone knows but few truly understand. So get ready, because in the next few minutes, you're going to discover exactly how humanity plans to become an interplanetary species, and why each of these plans could be both our salvation and our doom. Aldrin Cycler, the ultimate space bus. Let's start with something few people know about, but which might be the smartest plan ever created to get to Mars. I'm talking about the Aldrin Cycler, developed by Buzz Aldrin himself. And man, if anyone understands space exploration, it's this guy. Buzz isn't just the second person to walk on the moon. He was a Navy fighter pilot with 66 combat missions in the Korean War, earned his doctorate in astronautics from MIT, and literally helped NASA develop the maneuvers we still use in space today. When this guy talks about going to Mars, you listen. And his idea is genius. Why not create the equivalent of a space bus that constantly goes back and forth between Earth and Mars? That's the Cycler, a gigantic spacecraft that orbits the Sun in a trajectory that meets with Earth and Mars at regular intervals. Here's the trick. Using gravitational assistance from both planets, this space bus can make the trip between worlds at incredible speeds, burning ridiculously small amounts of fuel. We're talking about reducing travel time from Earth to Mars to just four to six months, half the time of a traditional mission. But wait, it's not a free ride to Mars. The first challenge is building this thing. It needs to be gigantic to accommodate six people and all the supplies needed to survive on Mars for long periods. So we'd have to assemble this spacecraft in Earth orbit or on the moon itself. And here's where it gets interesting. Buzz has zero interest in living on the moon. For him, going back there would be more like reaching past glories than fighting for new triumphs. The moon should be seen not as a destination, but as a starting point, one that puts humanity on a trajectory to colonize Mars and make us a two-planet species. Once built, the cycler would begin its acceleration toward Mars, probably using solar ion propulsion, the most fuel-efficient system we have today. Yes, it's slow. But that's okay, because the first trip would be unmanned, just to gain momentum and establish the correct orbit. But here comes the scary part. When the cycler returns near Earth, it won't decelerate to wait for us. It'll use Earth's gravity as a slingshot to gain even more speed. And it's at that exact moment that we need to send our crew in a taxi vehicle to catch a ride. Aldrin calls this an elliptical rendezvous, and it's literally life or death. We need to dock two spacecraft at extremely high speed in deep space, far from Earth's safety. The margin of error is zero. If we miss our ride, the crew is trapped in interplanetary space forever. The taxi only carries enough fuel to reach the cycler's speed, not to return home. The mini starship, the plan that could beat Elon Musk. And before we talk about the starship everyone knows, I need to tell you about an idea that could revolutionize everything. The mini starship. And no, it doesn't come from SpaceX. This idea was presented by engineer Robert Zubrin, 
a guy who was talking about colonizing Mars long before Elon Musk appeared on the scene. And he generally supports SpaceX projects, except for one big complaint. He thinks the Starship is too big. His logic is simple and terrifying. It's going to be much harder to bring people home if we use a gigantic vehicle. So he proposed the mini Starship, and the operation is genius. Here's how it works. We launch the normal Starship as we know it, with the super heavy booster taking everything above Earth's atmosphere. The main ship burns all its fuel to reach low Earth orbit, where it's refueled. But here's the difference. Instead of needing eight or ten tanker ships, the Zubrin method only needs three propellant loads. With tanks partially refueled, the Starship departs Earth orbit and travels to a point in space called translunar injection. And here's where the magic happens. The big Starship opens its cargo fairing and reveals the mini Starship inside, which undocks and fires its own Raptor engine to fly the rest of the way to Mars. Why does this make sense? First, it's much easier to land on Mars with a smaller vehicle. The more mass you have, the more energy you need to decelerate. The traditional Starship is extremely massive, so Elon is counting on an insane atmospheric entry method that involves braking in the Martian atmosphere, which is incredibly thin. No matter what happens, the Starship is going to be moving incredibly fast when it hits Mars's surface. It's going to be a very dramatic last-minute event, with three engines firing at maximum power to decelerate the whole thing before a smooth landing. On the other hand, a mini starship could still break in Mars's upper atmosphere, but then would fire its landing engine at a relatively high altitude and hover slowly to the surface, similar to what we've seen Martian landers do successfully several times. The fuel problem on Mars. But here's reason number two, and it's about getting home. Just as a huge vehicle needs a lot of energy to decelerate, it also needs a lot of energy to take off. And energy is fuel. And fuel is going to be scarce on Mars. Elon's method depends on producing methane and oxygen using local resources from planet Mars. Some kind of drilling operation would be needed to extract water ice from the Martian surface along with a carbon capture system to extract CO2 from the atmosphere. The hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen would then be isolated and combined to create the methylene fuel that Starship needs to return home. This method works on Earth, but we also know it requires an enormous amount of energy to execute the process. A full-size Starship will need about 600 tons of propellant with our current technology, we can produce 2 kilograms of fuel per day per kilowatt of energy. This means we'd need a 600 kW power source running for 500 consecutive days to produce the necessary fuel. What would this look like? 30,000 square meters of solar panels, 6 entire football fields which by itself would require eight full-size starships just to deliver the solar panels to Mars. And then how many more robots to build all of this? If you reduce the size of the Martian vehicle to the mini starship, you also reduce the amount of fuel needed to one-sixteenth of what we just talked about. So it would be just one football field of solar panels, still a lot, but much more manageable than six. Of course, the big disadvantage of a miniaturized starship would be the miniaturized cargo capacity. Even if the ship is one-sixteenth the size, the total payload isn't reduced by the same factor, because we still have the giant super heavy and the big starship doing all the heavy lifting to escape Earth's gravity. According to Zubrin's theory, the mini starship could still carry at least 50 metric tons of payload to Mars' surface half of Elon's vision, but still significantly more than any other rocket system could deliver. The Starship, Beauty in Deadly Simplicity 
And now that we have a general understanding of how complicated traveling from Earth to Mars can be, we can really appreciate the beautiful simplicity of Elon Musk's method. According to the original design, the Starship is supposed to be gigantic. This isn't an accident or flaw, it's the main feature. The interplanetary transport system was Elon's first idea, and it was even bigger than the current Starship. So if anything, this is already a compromise. Because of this extreme size, the Starship needs to burn an enormous amount of fuel just to reach orbit around Earth. Before going anywhere, we need to fill the tanks with oxygen and methane, and this total propellant load is so large that it will take about 10 Starships just to move all the liquid to space. But once the refueling maneuver is complete, the Starship is essentially reset back to full power, and this means we can take off toward Mars with an incredible mass of crew and cargo aboard. Elon thinks a future version of Starship could transport 100 people at once from Earth to Mars. This doesn't mean it would be a comfortable flight, but it could be done. All that fuel we collected in Earth orbit is burned to put us on course for Mars. The only propellant remaining on the ship is a very small amount stored in a tank in the nose cone, enough fuel to make the engines run for a few seconds and this fuel needs to be reserved for the final landing burn. If we use it too early, the Starship will crash into Mars' surface and everyone dies. If we burn too late, we collide with Mars and everyone dies. The only thing that can slow the ship before the landing burn is the aerodynamic drag from Mars' extremely thin atmosphere. We're coming in hot and breaking hard. If anything goes wrong, even a little bit, it's game over. The Raw Reality of Colonization Now, assuming we don't die in the process, we almost immediately turn our attention to refueling our empty starship. Remember the ice drilling and giant fields of solar panels? Well, if we're going to force our way to Mars, our only choice is to be equally aggressive on our trip back home. But assuming we manage to become successful methane farmers on the Red Planet, we take off from Mars and return home after about two or three years in deep space, which is going to be terrible for a myriad of reasons. But I think that's why Elon is counting on most of the people he sends to Mars to simply stay there, becoming the first interplanetary colonists. This will also be difficult at times, but it would be a life of purpose and adventure far beyond anything humans have ever experienced. And that's more or less what makes all of this so fascinating to begin with. We're talking about literally becoming a two-planet species, about expanding human consciousness beyond Earth for the first time in our history. Each of these plans, Aldrin's Cycler, Zubrin's Mini Starship, and Musk's Giant Starship, represents a completely different approach to the same impossible goal, making humanity an interplanetary species. And the truth is, we'll probably need all of them. The Cycler for regular transport of people and supplies, the Mini Starship for specialized missions and safe returns, and the Giant Starship for the mass transport that will establish the first permanent colonies. Because in the end, it's not just about getting to Mars, it's about staying there, thriving there, and ensuring that humanity has a future even if something catastrophic happens to Earth. If you found this journey through the plans for Mars as fascinating as I did, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more space exploration content, and tell me in the comments, which of these three plans do you think has the best chance of success? Thanks for watching, and see you in the next space adventure.